here we are at Sojourner Truth's house. By 1845, it became clear that the Northampton Association of Education and Industry was really not going to make it as a community. So the leaders began to think of ways they could kind of morph into a different kind of community, which we now know as the neighborhood community. First, they sold off the silk mill, and Sojourner Truth found herself without a home. So she moved into the family of George W. Benson. After that, her best friend, Samuel Hill, developed the lots that we are in up here now on the corners of Pine and Maple and Park Streets and developed Eaton's Village Lots with his brother-in-law. So, on April 15th, 1850, Sojourner Truth bought, with a mortgage from Samuel Hill, lot number 11 of Eaton's Village Lots. Her deed of April 15th says that there was already a building on there, so she probably built this house in 1849. She had to figure out a way to pay for the house. And she knew that her friend Frederick Douglass, who was here in 1845 and who had just published his narrative, had done very well. Remember, Sojourner could neither read nor write. So with the help of Olive Gilbert and with the help of Arthur G. Hill, she dictated the story of her life as a northern slave. Through sales of this narrative, she was able to pay off her mortgage to Samuel Hill in 1854 and owned her home free and clear. In 1856, she bought the next lot down, lot number 10, but by then, most of her activity had moved out to the Midwest, and friends of hers who were living in Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, friends from her slavery days in Ulster County, actually, uh, invited her to come out there to live. So she sold everything for a decent profit in 1857 and moved out to Battle Creek, where she lived out her days, and that is where Sojourner Truth is buried in Battle Creek, Michigan.